In this video, we're going to be looking at a common low level design coding question, which is to design a parking lot system. So let's jump in. So here we have the description on the left and the code on the right, and we're going to dive into that deeper in a second. But right now we're gonna focus on the description first to get a clear idea of what's required. So our job is to design a parking lot system that supports the following. We need to have multiple parking levels per parking lot. For each level, 20% of the spots should be of size small, 50% of size medium, and 30% of size large. We need to support vehicle types of motorcycle, car, and bus, and spots of size small, medium, and large. Motorcycles are only allowed to park in small spots, cars are only allowed to park in medium spots and buses are only allowed to park in large spots. We need to be able to track each parked vehicle by its license plate and map it directly to a spot and we need to be able to return the total number of available spots that can fit a given vehicle type. So the core classes and methods that need to be created are the vehicle class. So this will take a license plate, which is a string, a vehicle type, which is of type vehicle type, and this will initialize a vehicle, a parking spot. So that will take a spot ID and a size, and this will initialize a parking spot. We have a parking level class, which will take a level ID and a number of spots, and this will initialize a parking level. And then finally, we'll have the parking lot class, which will take a number of levels and the number of spots per level, and it will initialize a parking lot. We'll also have a park vehicle method which takes a vehicle as a parameter and returns a boolean. So if the vehicle is already parked or there are no available spaces we return false otherwise we park the vehicle and simply return true. For the remove vehicle method it takes a license plate as a parameter and returns a boolean. If the vehicle is not in the parking lot we return false otherwise we remove the vehicle and return true. And finally, to get available spots, this takes a vehicle type as a parameter and returns a number. So given a vehicle type, you return the number of available spots in the parking lot for that type of vehicle. So looking at this example here, in the inputs, we will have the classes and methods being called and then another array of the parameters being passed. So the first three, we are simply initializing vehicles. So we're initializing a car, which has a license plate of C123 and is of type car. We're then initializing a bus and then a motorcycle. We will then create our parking lot and we'll provide two levels and each level will have 10 parking spots. We'll then call the park vehicle with the car. We will then park the bus and then we'll check available spots for the motorcycle. We will then park the motorcycle and remove the car and finally get the available spots for the type of car. So this is the output, but the easiest way to understand this is simply look at the explanation. So we're getting nulls to start off because we're creating our three vehicles and then also initializing our parking lot. So they return null. And so you can see here we've got two levels and 10 spots. And with our 20%, 50% and 30% breakdown, that means we've got two small, five medium and three large per level. And because we have two levels, we can simply double it. So we've got four small, 10 medium and six large parking spots. Then for the operations, we park our vehicle, our car. This returns true as it uses one medium spot. Then we park the bus and this also returns true. It uses one large spot. Then we'll check the available spots for our motorcycle type. And this will return four as all small parking spots are still available. And then we'll park the motorcycle and this will return true. And there's now three remaining. And then we'll remove the vehicle, which is the car registration. This will return true and it frees up the medium spot for us. And then finally we can get available vehicles for type car and it will return 10 as all medium spots are now free again. So hopefully that makes sense. But when we walk through the code, it should all be very clear how it works. Okay, so starting off, we have our vehicle type and spot size enums, and these, these will be used throughout the solution. Next, we have our vehicle class and each vehicle has a license plate and vehicle type so this is super straightforward next in the parking spot class in the constructor each parking spot has a unique id spot id a size of type spot size and this will be used to determine what type of vehicles can park in that spot and we also have vehicle which references a vehicle which is initially set to none indicating that no vehicle is parked there and the spot is empty next we have the is available method and returns true if the spot is none indicating that it's available otherwise it returns false if a vehicle is present in the parking spot the next method is the can fit vehicle method, which takes a vehicle as a parameter. And so this method contains a mapping of vehicle types to size. So all we need to do to determine if a vehicle can fit is to see if the vehicle type maps to the same size as the spot. And if it does, we return true. Otherwise, we simply return false. To park a vehicle, we then use the previous two methods to ensure that the spot is available and that the vehicle can fit. And if th these evaluate to true, then we set the vehicle of the spot to the vehicle and return true. 
otherwise we simply return false. And then finally, for the remove vehicle, we use multiple assignment to set V to be the vehicle, and then setting the vehicle attribute to none, which removes the vehicle from the spot, and then we simply return V, which represents the vehicle that has just been removed. Next, we have our parking level class. So in the constructor, each level has an ID to uniquely identify it, it also has a list of parking spots. And then lastly, the constructor calls the initialize spots method with the number of spots provided as a parameter. The purpose of the initialize spots method is to create the correct number of each type of spot for that level based on the number of spots for that level. So in this solution, 20% will be small, 50% will be medium, and the remaining 30% will be large. And obviously this can be configured depending on what the interviewer wants. Then once we have those numbers, we will iterate over each and keep track of an index variable so that we can give a unique ID to each parking spot. The next method is the find available spot and this iterates over all of the spots and checks if the spot is available and can fit the vehicle and if so it returns the spot otherwise it just returns none. And then the last method in the class is the get available spots count and so what this does is it creates a dummy vehicle object of the given vehicle type and then sums every spot that is available and can fit that vehicle and then returns that number. Then we have the final class which is the parking lot class and in the constructor it receives the number of levels and the number of spots per level as parameters and then it will create the levels using list comprehension where it iterates over the number of levels and creates a park and level for each. It also creates an occupied dictionary which maps a vehicle's license plate to its parking spots ID which is used to quickly check if a vehicle is already parked and to locate its spot for removal. Finally, we have the spot map, uh, which is a dictionary mapping the spot IDs to the parking spot objects, enabling O of 1 access to a specific spot for operations like removing a vehicle, avoiding the need to search through all the levels and spots. In the park vehicle method, we just check if the vehicle license plate exists in occupied, then we know it is already parked, so we can simply return false. Otherwise, we iterate over all of the levels, and if there is an available parking spot for that vehicle type, we can update the occupied dictionary and return true, otherwise we simply return false. In the remove vehicle method, we try to retrieve the spot ID from the occupied dictionary, and if it doesn't exist, we simply return false. If it does exist, we can get access to the spot object from the spot map dictionary. We then check if the spot has a vehicle and that the license plate is the plate associated with that vehicle. And if they both evaluate to true, we remove the vehicle from the spot and delete it from the occupied dictionary and then return true. Otherwise, we just return false. And then lastly, the get available spots method, it iterates over all of the levels and uses the get available spots count method to count the number of available spots for that vehicle type and then simply sums them up and returns that number. Okay, let's run the tests and see if it passes. Perfect, the test passed, so now let's submit it and see if the entire test suite passes. Perfect, they've all passed, so let's now look at the time and space complexity. So looking at the time complexity for parking lot, for initialization, it's big O of N, where N represents the total number of spots. For the park vehicle method, it's big O of N, as there is a linear search for the available spot. For remove vehicle, that's big O of 1, as we use a hash map lookup. And for get available spots, that's also big O of N, as we are scanning all spots. For the space complexity, that's big O of N for storing all the spots and the spot map lookup. And so the key optimization we've done is to use a hash map to make vehicle removal big O of 1. And so obviously, there's many ways of improving this. So this is a relatively simple low level design, but sometimes people can get caught up with the time pressure aspect of the interview. So having seen it once, I think makes it just that much easier. So I hope you got some value out of this. If you want to test yourself and in different languages, the link to the question is in the description. And if you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe and share it with a friend as it helps the channel out a lot. And I will see you in the next one.